be doing more from the Red Hot Chili Peppers album, One Hot Minute. This is the title track, One Hot Minute. So uh, we'll go through this one chronologically, just start, finish. And uh, this one is in standard tuning, and we are in the key of E. All right, so let's go back to the beginning and talk about the intro, which, to be honest, I, I don't really care for. Um, so what's going on? I'll just play it for you, the whole intro. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. So here it goes. All right, so that's it. So uh, playing with a, a clean tone, um, and, and what he's doing is just uh, major and minor third shapes on your uh, uh, fifth and fourth strings. So um, kind of the first thing you're doing is like implying an F sharp uh, chord here. So you're playing at the ninth and eighth frets on the fifth and fourth strings. So the first measure we're just doing. That's the first measure. Here's measure two. bend that note up a half step at the end of the second measure. Then uh, here's the first half of the third measure. So doing our eighth and ninth frets. Then what happens in the second half of the third measure is we're going to go to the nine and seven shapes and we're going to do this. So that's nine seven twice there. The uh, fourth measure here we're going to do this. That's back to 9 and 8, and we're letting them ring. And the final measure, kind of the same type deal. I think it sounds good, too, if you do like a little uh, crescendo, too, to build up into the, the rock out part that hits in uh, right afterwards. All right, so uh, the main riff, uh, the, the verse riff, uh, where Anthony Kita starts singing, um, that I was playing a second ago, is... So that's it. Just a one measure figure. What we're doing is two accented open E notes. And then you're going to do this. So uh, what you're doing is you're, you're picking the sixth string, or sorry, the sixth fret of your third string, bending up, releasing, bending up, and releasing again to one pick. And then you're going to do, uh, uh, and these are half step bends, and then a, a half step bend at the end of the measure. That you're gonna put some vibrato on, and that's held for for two beats. So I'll get uh, all together again. Is the idea. So we're gonna do that four times, um, and then uh, what, I, what I'm gonna call the next little kind of part that connects to the next verse is is the pre-chorus. So the pre first pre-chorus that we have sounds like this. So what we're doing here is we're, we're playing C, uh, C octave on our fifth and uh, third strings, so the third and fifth frets for those notes, um, and we're going to do this. So we're sliding up to five and seven, and then seven and nine. Then what we're going to do is form like what I like to call the Hendrix, uh, one of the ways Hendrix likes to play is major chords. So what we're doing here is it's an A major chord, so we're doing uh, five, four, the fourth string is muted, and then six on the third string. And we're going to do this. So, uh, the gallop rhythm essentially. And then we have this. So we're going to go back to the uh, C octave. And then we have this. Uh, some double stops. So those double stops are on your first two strings. We have eight. 11, and then you're coming up to 12, so. Is how it transitions back into the main riff. All right, so um, now we're gonna play the, the main riff a few times, and then we're gonna do a uh, different pre-chorus. So let's check that out, it goes like this. So uh, pretty much the, the, or the first measure is exactly the same of the pre-chorus. Um, and we're going to do the gallop thing on the A chord too in the second measure. 
And then the ending, we're going to do triplets on the eighth fret double stop. All right, and then we're back to the main riff. Okay, so um, the next pre-chorus that we're going to have, there are a lot of these pre-choruses, um, is going to transition us into the chorus. So let's let's check that out. So here it is. So uh, just a little variation, we're, we're doing the, the same beginning, so then kind of the same thing with the beginning of the A. Then what we're going to do is a chromatic thing, we're going to slide up to the 7th fret, and then like I said, going down the fret at a time, and then starting with the C octave again. And that, that leads us into the chorus. So uh, the chorus is simple. I'll play it for you first here. So here we go. All right, so that's it. Just some easy power chords. Um, an F sharp power, power chord, um, so 9, 11, 11, fifth string root, going to E5, three strings, then B5, six string root, seven, nine, nine, going to A5. Um, so I'll, I'll play uh, the rhythm real slow. One and two and three and go and. <laughs> takes care of our first chorus. Um, what we have at the, the end is um, this. I'll just play it for you and then explain it. All right, so we're doing a C7 chord to a D7. Uh, and what we're kind of doing is playing uh, accents on the downbeats of each chord. So your C7 is played. Um, it's a fifth string root, three, two, three. Then you're sliding up to 5-4-5 five, five for your D7. Uh, and, and what happens is um, the, the transition back into the next verse is like... So he plays that instead of doing the... Uh, thing for the first measure of the next verse. Okay, uh, so pretty much what's going to happen then uh, is... Uh, we're going to repeat what I've taught you before in terms of the verses and pre-choruses and then um, up until everything's the same until we get to the second chorus and um, what happens with the second chorus is the guitar part changes a little bit. There's a, a fill over the second measure so that sounds like that. This. <laughs> So instead of just doing the B to A chord, we're doing some octave fills. So we have this. So we're doing um, a slide from the seventh frets to the ninth, uh, and I'm just going to be referring to where the first finger is in these octave shapes. So then a, a muted note. Then we're going five to seven with the slide to uh, the second fret. And when you do that second fret, uh, you're going to slide back up. So it's like... So it just, you know, it's the hands uh, transitioning back up to um, where you're going. All right. Um, so the uh, we're going to do the, the ending to the chorus with the C7 and D7 stuff. And then we have what I'm going to call this, this interlude uh, uh, riff where he's, Anthony's singing the say goodbye to where you buy, you got it now, uh, that kind of thing, this real repetitious vocal rhythm. Um, so that goes like this. So 
just, you know, we're doing an open E note to start it, and then some power chords with fifth string roots. So we're doing a D5, and then a G5, so 5th and 7th frets to 10th and 12th, back to D5, and then we're doing an E5. Um, and when he does the E5, he's bending every note in the chord up a half step. So you, if it depends on how you want this to sound. If you want it to sound more ugly and gross and out of tune, bend the strings with your fingers. And if you don't have a whammy bar, you're gonna have to do that anyway. Um, but what I was doing was I was just pressing the bridge down to, to make the pitch of the strings go up. So either way you wanna do it, it'll, it'll work there. All right, so uh, let's see what's next. So the uh, post or end of the chorus type thing, the C7 to D7 thing's gonna happen um, with slight variation there. <laughs> So uh, what happens here is uh, the, the song kind of breaks down. Um, you have uh, a couple of different guitar parts, uh, three of them actually, um, and I'll, I'll kind of break down what every part's doing. The chord progression, just so you understand what you're playing over, is essentially like an E7 chord. And I'll clean this tone up a little bit. Um, so that's your, your first chord. Um, and then your next chord of the chord progression is an implied C sus2. And then the next chord is an A with a C sharp in the bass. So E7, C sus2, to A with a C sharp in the bass. So that's the chord progression. Um, Two of the guitar tracks are Ebo tracks, and what they're doing is they're playing these, just the octaves of um, the, the roots or the, the lowest notes of the chords. So in the interest of time, I'm not gonna tell you each Ebo part. Um, so it, basically you have an E octave between these parts to start with. And then. So it's just, it's doing that basically throughout the, the whole part. Until you get to the end, um, there's uh, a little fill that it does that's like... And, and this is actually not Ebo, it's um, coming back to like the main guitar track of the song. Um, so what he does is like, he, he basically rolls the volume control back up. You know, so, to get you back into the rocking uh, guitar part. All right, so the, the other uh, guitar part is, um, this is mainly kind of out of the E mix Lydian tonality. So he's just improvising kind of like some basic little licks, um, and you know, and, and, and outlining the chord tone. So I'll, I'll play that for you real quick. One, and two, and three, and go, and... <laughs> parts there. Alright, so let's uh, move on and, and uh, talk about what, what's coming after that. So, uh, the next part of the song is the, the chorus part, um, and it's the, the kind of like the second chorus type deal where we had the octave type feel, fills in the second measure. The song ends, um, we're going to do just like a vamp, which means just kind of repeat um, the C7 chord that we had at the end of the chorus. The <laughs> type thing with the accent pattern on the downbeats, and then 
So that happens for a total of 15 measures. And then we're gonna do uh, just a uh, low open E note to end it. Uh, the second guitar part is just playing a B flat note on um, each downbeat in quarter notes with vibrato. <laughs> on that guitar and there's you know just some whammy bar effects and noise you know kind of like a smashing pumpkin z ending okay so that does it for one hot minute that's all the parts um matt brown if you'd like the tabs for this one it's not my transcription it's actually from the um the one hot minute book which is an awesome book i highly recommend you you pick it up and buy it uh whoever transcribed it uh did an awesome job so so kudos as a, a fellow transcriber all right, so uh, yeah, more from this coming, uh, this album coming, more Smashing Pumpkins, more Nirvana. You guys know what albums I've got going right now, so I'll see you guys around for more lessons. Thanks.